I mean, having two Arnolds back to back, it was never a good idea, even and having units after that as well. So right now, I'm basically 50 50 with you, Carols. I want to tell you guys first because I don't want to be hearing all these bull things that you know people can do on social media. So yeah, right now I'm 50 50, and I'm not going to go sacrifice eight weeks for World's Strongest Man to go do a UK Arnold. That's just not what I want to do. And I ain't going into World's Strongest Man 80 percent. Stoke and Brothers are coming to World's Strongest Man. We aren't going to be separated again. Right guys, so I am back from the Arnold Classic in America. I'm jet lagged, but I'm so glad to see all you faces. I'm and me. a bit glad to see his face. But anyway, we're just gonna do a wee recap of how it went. Also how it went competing without Luke there. It's my first show that I've done, I think, since I started Strawman properly, that I've done a show without him. So yeah, it was scary, it was nerve wracking, it was weird, but um, we'll get into that in a bit. So we will go with the first event the elephant bar deadlift. Yeah, I mean, there's not really been much word of a lie. Um, I've, I was struggling a wee bit with deadlift. I think for me, it's I was doing a lot of deadlifting in a suit uh, prior to Arnold for World, for Britain's Strongest Man, and uh, obviously in a suit for myself, I find it so much kind of easier for obvious reasons. And then to then take the suit off after Britain's and have about four or five weeks prep. You know, it was uh, some sessions were good, some sessions were bad, but. I got it nailed on the head the last session before I went out and pulled a 410, which gave me confidence. Uh, all I wanted to go do w out there was to do better than last year, and that is to hit more than 360 kg, which I did. Woohoo! I opened at 408 kilograms, I think, and then I hit a 415. And the final lift for myself was just go all out and see what I can do. I had, I, I was confident with the 408. I went and opened a bit higher because. I needed to say to myself, I needed confidence and I didn't want to just go and do 380, 390 because that would have been me as it been me as an, in, in a negative mindset then. I kind of just said, right, let's just open up 408, do a nice easy pull and take it from there. And then that went surprisingly easier than I thought. And then I did, I think it was 415, I did a smaller jump. I knew that if, you know, if people had failed and I know that people would have jumped their second jump higher. So it was all about tactics with Dallas and the second went as well, went to plan as well. And a lot of people failed their... Uh, I think it was second and third lift, which then put me in a good position. Third lift, I wanted maybe like 420. I, I went to 424 because uh, after me it was, <coughs> was at 424 and the only, reason, the only way I could beat him was or to match with him or, was to pull that and it was kind of a bit out of my reach, the third lift. But yeah, it is what it is. I ended up coming, I think, top five in the deadlift, which, or fourth in the deadlift, which was massive improvements from last time anyway and got me... Um, a nice wee confident booster from the first event. Do you think? Do you think if you'd gone the first event, first rep, to, and then your second lift was the third, do you think you would have got the third? Uh, no. Nah. You weren't far away from it. I thought uh, maybe, but the thing is, with that is a is a risk to reward. I think that's what it's all about deadlifting. I don't really like max deadlift when you only got three lifts because it's all about, like I said, risk to reward. Like we know that there's some really good deadlifters there, but at the end of the day, they have to take risks and. It's uh, just some of them failed the risk that they should be hitting. A lot of people opened their first lift maybe 400 odd, but then they jumped to 430, and a lot of them failed that. And I was like, right, if I can pull this second lift, I've already come in the top five. And then I think I played it quite smart, which is good. You know, usually I kind of not very good at the tactical side of things, but I think, you know, judging by past performance in the Arnolds on the deadlift, it was a very good tactical move that I made, and it was a nice first event. Oh, I tactical genius, you, you <laughs> maniac, <Sure>. lad. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did really well. That was I was buzzing for you. What about? <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't wind you up. Uh, we have to give big thought a shout out for his deadlift there. Eh? I mean, yeah, I mean, going into that deadlift, if anyone thought they could beat four, I think they would have been smoking some sort of hubba jubba because yeah, half four looked unreal. I think half four right now could pull over five hundred kg. He just looks yeah unreal on deadlift, and I think he is going to be the best deadlifter back. And strong, and I think he's going to be able to pull 505 plus raw, and I think that's his goal. And if he can do that, that's bonkers. But like, yeah, he pulled 465 or whatever the winning was, like a speed rep, and that's he didn't insane. have to push either. And I think that was a massive advantage for him because I think he may have thought he might have had to go heavier, mm. but to save all that and not really stress himself in the first event really did line him up for the rest of the competition. So I think he thought that was a bit easier than than uh, it should have been, should have been, and he didn't get pushed mm. too much. But yeah, I mean, you could see it like. No one was over a thousand pound on a weekend because of how 
I think brutal the deadlift actually is and the tactics about it, but yeah, Halfer wasn't kidding. He was just a big, I think it was his second lifter sitting he won it with. Yeah. He didn't even need to do three lifts, which was pretty mind-boggling. So. Felt bad for, obviously a wee shout for Maxime as well, getting an injury in that first yeah. event. That was not so nice to see. Um, so hopefully, Maxime, if you're watching, we wish you a speedy recovery, mate. Um, deadlift is a deadlift, and hopefully we'll see Big Thor at Vegas. Get yourself to Vegas, Thor, boy. We'll see you at the roulette table. <laughs> uh, so yeah, great result, obviously. Big Mitch Hooper kind of smashing it as well. He did really well. Evan as well. Evan, yeah. part, don't know if you've seen it, what he did the first um, deadlift. Just maniac Evan, just so much power. Let go and then he's got no reps. He had to do two reps uh, for the first first attempt. Uh, but yeah, big shout to Evan as well. I think he did really well in the deadlift. Second event. Uh, second event, frame carry. My, I, there's nowhere to lie. I'm absolute nemesis. I think frame carry at Arnold's I mean, frame carry at every other comp's fine. <laughs> frame carry at Arnold's just doesn't mess Tom Stoughton and frame carry at Arnold's doesn't go. Well, this is obviously the one that I, I was going in, you know, with the least confidence because I think, I mean, when you don't perform good at an event and, you know, it's like you've literally moved in the frame two metres, you're obviously going to have that doubt in your head. It doesn't matter, like, you know, how well you've trained it or whatever, you always still have to perform in a day. And that was what I was scared of the most. I mean, we bought a frame... That was kind of like the same handle as Arnold's after Britain's. I had about three or four sessions on it, which made me a bit more confident. But for some reason after deadlift, I kind of just crumbled. I was like asking people questions, where I put my hands, where I do this. And, you know, as soon as I said that, I kind of knew to myself, like, this this is a really bad mindset to have. I wasn't going into the frame confident. I wasn't kind of... What I usually do in events is just go in and lift it. Like, I was more trying to do where my hands are, which I shouldn't have done. You know, I think if you're strong enough, if your hands are a bit off the centre or a bit back, a bit front, yeah, the frame's going to go up and down, but at the end of the day, you should be able to still complete it. And I, I think w that's what I was kind of doing backstage was over trying to, over um, thinking about where I put my hands. And, you know, Sinead could see it, a few other people could see it, and I was just like, damn, this is where my Arnold is, is going to go downhill. That's what I really thought in my head. So I was just like, Stafford, let's go. I was, I went up and... Uh, I've, I've picked up a bit easier than I thought, and I think for myself it's just getting food speed up. I think if I could get my food speed up a bit faster, then holding on shouldn't really be an issue. And I think also what I did when I did drop it is I just rushed the second pickup because like, I was picking it up again quite easily, but I think it was just rushing the pickup to try and just try and finish it. I think my, my goal was obviously to finish it. I didn't do that, and I think it was just... Although I did better than two metres, like eight or nine metres, I thought, oh, that's me come last because there's so many good frame. Uh, frame, um, what do you call it? Carriers. Uh, frame carries, frame holders, frame carries. Uh. But in the end, I actually came sixth on that, which is my best result, and actually had a, yeah had a better result than I thought it would. You know, I went at the end of the day fifth and fifth in both the events. I ended up fourth and sixth, which cancelled itself out. So I hit a PB on it. I shouldn't be too disheartened, but yeah, that was the event that I went in no confidence at all because I had done bad in the past, which is bad to have, but. I couldn't really help myself doing that. I, I kind of glad that was the first day because, like I said, those deadlift and frame, if you look at back last year, I was last in both of them. So that was, as soon as I got those two events over, then I kind of eased up a wee bit and, yeah, I, was, I went to sleep happier. So I think with the frame carry as well, you know, there's a couple of performances, maybe not what we expected, you know, a big Evan. I thought Evan was going to smash it and ignore like, no, no discredit to you, Evan, but um, you're a fantastic frame carrier. But I think it's just up that hill, isn't it? Getting that elevation right and the way the, the frame swings. and It's, it's such a different... I don't, I don't think it needs to be up a ramp, to be honest. I think mm. a 400k frame for 20 metres on a flat surface is, is heavy enough. But mm. yeah, I think that t totally changes it because I think uh, if there was no, f no ramp, I think oh, everybody yeah, completes it. But it's just, it makes it that... Yeah, much harder. You know, a, a big, I think a huge shout out again to Hafler coming back, you know, first uh, uh, comp back again and smashing the frame carry, mate. That was class. I mean, Mitchell Hafler and Kulikos, I wasn't as surprised with those two, but Hafler I was pretty shocked because I thought, you know, he might have picked up and his grip might have not been ready, but yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> he proved us wrong. He was uh, he dominated the first two events as well, which was nice to see. So, so how, how did you feel? So that was, a lot, that was the first two events of day one. Went back to the hotel. How were you feeling going to sleep that night? I, I was a bit disheartened until I seen the leaderboard. I thought I was in like seventh or eighth place, but to be, I think it was fourth, joint fourth, yeah. joint fourth. 
eased me up a wee bit because obviously that had been my highest placing, uh, my highest finish on an Arnold's day. So I was just like, all I have to do now is, you know, play for a podium. I mean, the worst case scenario is podium. The best case is winning. I, I didn't really want to focus on for second, first. I was trying to focus on third, who was Evan. So I had to. I think Evan was four points ahead of me or something. So I was hunting him down first, and that's who I was kind of had my kind of proper focus on. I knew I had two good events going into the day two, the third and fourth events. So I was confident, but I still had to do the job. And that's again with Arnold. You know, I've mm. crumbled before, so it was trying to get past that. So the Saturday we had sorry, the Saturday was day th event the, three. Which event was three was. Denny Stone, Tony Stone. Well, I mean, I actually have shocked at how many people did good in this event. I thought there was only going to be two or three people that would have did what Kilikoski and myself did, mm. like thirty feet or whatever yeah. past plus. But um, yeah, I was totally shocked. I think this event's more just about you have to just the pain. It's not about like how heavy it is. It's just about the pain. You know, you can get unlucky and trip and stuff as well. And it's just. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously Mitchell smashed it, Kilikoski smashed it, um, Evan. Evan smashed it, half hour, I think as well, yeah. myself, and like, even like, for me, even half hour, it's like, sometimes it's not always about what you can do in training and stuff, it's just performing the day, and that, you know, and I was five or six smashed it, and that's when I was like, geez, <laughs> these boys actually turned up to the Denny's, but that, I was just glad of mine, I hit a PB in, in uh, competition, so that's all you can really do, really, so it's, um, yeah, it was a, I th I, I, yeah, it was a good, good old, uh, good day for myself. It was a great battle between you all. I think that was quite an exciting one. Um, yeah, we'll come back to what, the thoughts, whatever after. But the fourth one, fourth event was a big one. The Apollo yeah, the Apollo Apollo. Apollo. And then this, I think I was still fourth place after this. I kind of, I thought me and Mitchell would be going head to head in this. Mm. I did not realize, I didn't think Kilikowski was going to perform as good as he did. I mean, he's coming back from injury and like. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'd never seen it much acts of him on YouTube and stuff, but I think he surprised, I think, not just me, but a lot of the field because, you know, he had suffered, an, I think, an injury in the frame and, he, man, he could hardly even walk. So to to do what he did on frame is pretty mind-boggling. But anyway, he went out first before me and uh, all I had to do in my head was match him or beat him. And I think that was my best case scenario was match him. I mean, realistically, I, four was what I wanted and four is what I got. And I used the time well. I executed the pl game plan to perfection. And my cleans felt good. My pressing felt really good. I think the pressing, when I got my the axle to the chest, I could have pressed that for another three or four reps. But yeah, I did what I did. And uh, there was a big match. You know, Mitch obviously won that with five, which was unreal. Myself and Kilikoski then. I think after that, there was, I think it was one, one rep or two reps. So, you know, there was a big massive difference. And I knew then... Half for me, I've dropped some points. Um, I think Evan was unlucky to get not get I think an extra rep or something on it as well, but it kind of put me in a good stead for the final event. So mm. it was quite funny watching it back. You were getting interviewed when Big Thor was up doing the second <laughs> rep. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. At the end of the day, I you know if Thor had gotten that rep, it was a rep, it was a bad bad refereeing mm. because like it wasn't locked out. It's I mean, people have seen photos of it, you see videos, it's... I mean, I think the proof's in the proof of a big Jerry Pritchett was like, ah, like... Yeah, yeah, I think it's... I think, yeah, you know, you, you can get reps that are soft, but there is soft, and then there's... Yeah, no reps. Not locked out and no reps. probably, to be and fair... that might have changed, I think, the outcome of... Mm. You know, like, if that, if I'd got that and I missed out on podium and cause of that, it would have been a bittersweet pill to swallow as well. So mm. I'm quite glad that, you know... Arnold had came backstage and actually, you know, listened to us, listened, watched the footage back and actually reversed the decision. And it's a big respect. Because did they say, did they say that you could challenge it, didn't they? There was a, yeah, I think, I you think could challenge yeah. the, the decisions and, um, you know, I, and again, you feel bad for, for Thor as well, because obviously he's got the down signal and maybe if he just carried on in another split second, he might have locked it out. Oh, but, yeah. um, so it's a tricky one with that, you know. I mean, it's, it's not athletes, it's, you know, you, it's, you look at the referees in yeah, this position and being like, I think you don't. I don't think you can rush putting your hand down as a ref. I think no. you need to have like a second control, then put it down. Um, and I think that's for everyone. I don't I think, think you can just unlock it and then boom. You know, Arnold's have to have a look at that and, and you know rectify that. Say, yeah. like, like guys, just to make it clear that you are allowed. To, if you have a, a a dispute with the referee and you can challenge it as they did in Worlds, you know, remember when we were doing that? There was mm. challenges made at Worlds. So like Arnold shouldn't be any different. I think yeah. as well. So, so. Think any comp should be different. Every comp should be. If you think the ref's not done the right call, yeah. go challenge because it. Because it's at the end of the day. Every sport has it, you know, yeah. like football has VAR now. I, I think it's brilliant. Rugby has uh, 
camera thing. So yeah, you need to be able to challenge Cause it. Because it's us that's competing. Yeah. We, we like the referees can say they know best, but unfortunately, like we know, yeah, yeah. we know best. I, I believe the athletes know best. If it's a good rep or a bad rep, we should have the ability to. I think, I think it's common sense if it's yeah. a, a good or bad lip. But anyway, it was a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The form, man. I but felt did feel it's bad. Part of the part. It was a fant- I mean, fair play again. Big Mitchell Looper coming out with the split jerks, um, showing that he's been working hard. So um, that was wild. That seen that, and then I remember your last rep, man. I was shouting at the TV or miming that was shouting because Cole was sleeping. I couldn't wake him up and almost passed out. But it was fantastic. But, uh, I, and then going on to the last event. I think last night. I think. <laughs> Every single athlete looked at this stone in the familiarisation and said, we're not lifting this. And Kilikowski just laughed to him. <laughs> so, um, in all honesty, I didn't really like it. Like, I don't think you should have possibly one of the hardest events in Strawman right now that maybe like only a handful of people can do at an end of a, a stone medley. I know the stone's not what, heavy and stuff, but they're still awkward. I mean, I think 90% of people didn't even get past the first stone. Mm. And I think it was only me, Mitchell and Kilikowski. Me and Mitchell, they just did the, the press and load. I, I, I believe that's right. And then Kilikowski absolutely smashed it. So I think that tells you something that, you know, the, I think it may have been a bit too much at the end for everyone. I think by then, you know, I had a really high problem with my bicep backstage. Uh, yeah, I was trying to press sandbags above my head for the warm up, and I couldn't even lift the left one off. And, mm-hmm. I started really panicking. I went to Mike and Dr. Todd, who you know been amazing with me this that uh, at Arnold's weekend, and like they were trying to get stuff sorted, and I just started being like that. I'm not even gonna get past the first one. Mm-hmm. So you know, I and I you seen I wear sleeves. I don't usually wear sleeves when I'm doing the press event either, and that was a last minute decision because I literally couldn't feel my bicep. So yeah, going there it was like I just had to press the first two things. I think if I I thought to myself, I do these two things, the stones a bonus, and mm-hmm. yeah, I did the first two. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't even get that stone. I'm not going to lie. Like, that stone is one of the hardest things. It doesn't matter if you're good at natural stones or that. That is a different ball game than natural stones. Mm. Natural stones has like some bit of dust you can grip. And this is kind of just feels like Ice. baby oil. Yeah. Like, and that's that's the difference. And I mean, you have the best athletes in the world. In the world, there, no one can do it except from Kilikowski. So you think it ha- it has to be a challenge. Mm. So yeah, and that's what happened. But then when Kilikowski, mm. but the thing is, he went before me. I was like. Ah oh, crap! <laughs> like, I think Halfer is going to complete the two. The best I can think for now is fourth. So I was just like stuff. So I just did those two things. Didn't do the stone. I was like, backstage like, darn it, I'm not going to hit it. And then everyone was going out and they weren't getting past the first. One. I was like, like even Martin not doing the first stone press. I was kind of like, you know, obviously he was injured, but there must be something a bit wrong because obviously you know that should be kind of a. A routine, you know, to do a, a one thirty stone press or one thirty five stone press should be a routine for a lot of us. But like when the when they were all kind of failing it all and not coming out, I, it was such a nervous wait at the end because I was like, I think I was like, I come fourth place. I was like, darn it, I've come fourth. And then people were saying to me, then half four guys were coming to me. I think I think you've come third. I think you've beaten four by half a point. And then yeah, when the news came out, I came third. I was it was a relief. It was buzzing. It was kind of just like I've proved to myself that I can actually be at heavy shows. You know, my performance wasn't the best, but I did enough to say that I was going to do podium. I was, I, I really thought like, there was no way I was going to win that show. With the, with the events there, like I just wanted to damage limitation, be like, right, let's prove to myself that I can actually podium at, at Arnold's and that's happy. If it's first place, if it's second place, if it's third place. That's my new mindset now is like, yeah, I always want to win the comp, but the worst case scenario is third place and anything above that's a bonus. So yeah, that's what I did. And, when the results come in, yeah, I was, I was pretty shocked. Sinead was shocked. Nathan was shocked. We checked five or six websites. Cause I was like, this, this can't be right because there's no way that I have gained like eight or nine points from half four and after the first day. I was very, very glad that I was able to actually prove to people that I can actually mm. come to the Arnold's and put on a performance finally after the third year of trying. So no, It was good. It was nice to... Pretty nervous to watch it um, back. But I think watching it, I don't know what, what you guys think, but... I think it'd be much better if it was like one and one, uh, one versus one. No, it's a axe of I, it, uh, this is what I've, this is what I've seen to like Tom and Ar- Ar- Arnold's our camera guy. And I've seen this to share as well. I think see the difference with World Strong Man and Giants Live is when you're going one on one, you know you can just push to the limit. And when you don't have someone, like if you're going out first and you don't have someone to go up against, mm. you think maybe four reps or three or twenty meters is enough, and you've done amazing. 
and you know you could do more, like you think that in your head it's that, but then someone comes out and you know you end up coming last. When you're doing one v one, like for example on the frame, when you're doing one v one, I guarantee you that frame results would be different. Uh, I the same with like the stone pressing, the dinny walks and stuff. Like if all you have a line to to go on, when you see these guys in front of you, when you see someone like uh, in your corner, you're right, you you squeeze that extra second, you mm. press an extra rep, and Arnold's could do that. I don't like. I mean, they only do two events and three events. I think mm. one on ones would be so much better for a crowd and for yeah, a, a watch for a, for watching as well. Mm. I you know you can say the same about like the rogue as well. Like rogue don't do any of that kind of. The rogue and Arnold's are too different the only, than anything else. Everyone else is like side by side and. Yeah, it's a, a much obviously like the Max deadlift and stuff. You know, Max lifts are always going to be yeah, you individual. Yeah. But like when it's when you're man versus a man, woman versus woman, you know that's we want to see. You want to have that yeah. element of a race. So much you? more entertaining, I especially so, like, yeah. yeah. If both if you're doing a four hundred joke and it's like for first and second place, you know, then if it's both of you standing there, you're just going to go all out. But mm. sometimes you, you know, not intentionally, but sometimes you take the foot off a gas wee bit if you're by yourself. Cause like, oh, I think I've done enough here. Mm. But then that guy that's done it, it's like, he's just done that fast. All I need to do is go a second faster and I win. Uh, Whereas when you're one-to-one, one one, you don't have that time to be like, I can go a second faster, you're just straight out. With, with the Arnolds, it was a little bit, not whatever, I just, it was a few comments about it. But like, like Oscar, for example, when Oscar did his lift, there was like commentary over that, you know, so it wasn't, it kind of took the onus away from the athlete. So like Arnold's maybe going forward, you know, make sure you don't do that because these athletes, you know, all of us athletes competing there deserve to have our own, you know, our own light then, you know, so it doesn't matter if you've come 10th, 1st, whatever, anywhere in between, like, you shouldn't be having commentary over that athlete, so the athletes out there competing, that should be the focus, not on... It's the athletes that make the show at the end of the day, yeah. like... And I think that's something to... I mean, because I felt a wee bit bad for for the guys then, you know, it's yeah. it's a fantastic show, Arnold's is fantastic, of course it is, but there's always room for improvement, and, you know, I think the build-up to the show as well, it was very, like, certain athlete heavy, and I think there should be more of a, a, a kind of, a spread along all the athletes, you know, no one mentioned you going into it, um, it was like... Yeah, the, I mean, that's, that, that is what, what it is, is. I mean, I, I'm not really too bothered that, but... Like I think, pushing the proving, I think everyone needs to take that Giants Live is the blueprint of straw, uh, straw man. Mm -hmm. And I think anyone else that didn't say is lying because Giants Live, every single person has their own walkout. They get to choose their music. They get that kind of two or three minutes that, to, for the crowd. It's it's a kind of more fairer thing. Celebrate the athletes. They celebrate the yeah, athletes for you. Know, it doesn't matter if you're in 10th place, you know, you can win, come in 10th place and win a yoke event. Mm -hmm. That'll be out. Giants Live will celebrate that. So, yeah, I mean, I like Arnold's. I love, you know, completing at them all, but I think, yeah, Giant Slive is the king of strawman right now, and I think everybody can take a yeah, seat and actually to, have to take some notes and just, like, learn from Giant Slive. Even, like, the podium aspect, you know, like, celebrate first. Yeah, I mean, no, first, I, you know, I mean, that, for me, that was the most disappointing thing, because I've worked so hard to mm. get on the podium, and I've seen in the past you get, like, third place trophies, second place trophies, first place, but to, for, us, for, a, for someone like Arnold's to not even have a podium where you don't even have like a picture of like the top three and it's like like I could have come last place and f just tell people I came third mm. like because everybody was just in a line but that line doesn't mean anything so yeah it's kind of like yeah that kind of took it off I was just like I came third but I don't have anything to show for it yeah. except from the internet results so yeah it's, it, it's a bit kind of disheartening when like yeah. it's all just about the first place even for the women's side it's all just about the first place women and the first place man mm. And anybody else around that, it doesn't really show too much about it. Mm -hmm. they, all, they have their kind of favourite athletes and it is what it is, but it should be more spread out, I think. I think you just celebrate every athlete because competing at Arnold's is such a cool thing, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's like you're the best guys in the world, so celebrate those athletes and, and just, you know, really put the onus on the athletes. That's, that's what I would like to see more of. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I think, you know, the events were pretty cool. Arnold's always have kind of a bit wacky events, don't they? So, um, but yeah, it was good, fantastic. Loved watching the live stream. It was, I think I got much sleep this weekend. Um, I was going to get a wee private jet out to party with you in Columbus, but that never happened. I um, just fell asleep, so it's fine. Yeah, so like going forward now, you know, we've kind of, we just had a chat this morning. Obviously, we, I've got Europe's coming up. We've got World Strongest Man. So how we're going to approach the training aspect is a little bit different. You know, we're going to take all the accountability 
make sure we're doing everything, eating right, training right, recovering right, everything is going to be 100%. You'll see a, a huge increase in, in workload, what we're doing for the, the prep going forward. Tom and I, we're going to be training together. I think obviously people also knew that I was meant to be doing, well, I'm down for UK Arnold's, but right now that's a 50-50. I think, I mean, you know what I lie, you should, you've seen how many people got hurt at Arnold's, uh, Ohio, and not just like wee injuries, some big injuries, and a lot of them were on the list for UK Arnold's. And I think, I mean, having two Arnold's back to back, it was never a good idea, even in having units after that as well. There's always going to be something. And I think, you know, of all you say it, but you have to then take comp competition by competition. I went into Arnold's, Ohio, with no injuries. I've come out with this bicep that needs to get started, and I've had a, you know, a glute and hip problem for a long, long time, which, you know, Dr. Todd and Mike can tell you about that if you know if you don't want to believe it because I was up in the room every night and before the show as well it's still still sore to this day and I'm trying to get it improved for a while so I don't want to so right now I'm basically 50-50 with you Carol's I want to tell you guys first because I don't want to be hearing all these bullshit crap things that you know people can do on social media I will if I if, I might not be competing at you Carol's but I will be at you Carol's on stalls with my sponsors and watching the straw man. So yeah, right now I'm 50-50. Until I get this checked, I can, I'm, can't really lift much with my left arm and I'm not gonna go sacrifice eight weeks for a well straw man to go do a UK Arnold. That's just not what I want to do. And I mean, with the, yeah, with what's happened at UK Arnold's in the past and stuff, I'm just gonna be 50-50 and I will put an announcement out on Instagram or somewhere telling you that I'm not gonna do it. But I want it to come from me, not, my name being on the com competitors list and, I'm, and it says that I'm going to be there when I'm not. I'm going to be there, but I might not be competing. So that's just to let you guys know. <laughs> I won't be there, so. Yeah, he, Luke's not going to be there. Luke's, I, I, I'm going to say this to Arnold. Luke's is on the web's website, but he said... Back he, in January. He, yeah, back in January, but he's, you know, he's pulled out because of the kid and stuff. So I think you need to realise that they don't change, the, their website doesn't get changed. So like we're telling you guys now, he's not going to be there at all, but I am going to be there. I, the only thing I was going to be doing was competing, but now I'm going to have more time to spend at the Expo, more time with fans, and I'm not going there if I'm not 100%. There's no way in hell that I'm going to do a competition again when I'm not 100%. I'm not risking Will Strong's man. I mean, Will Strong's man has, is going to be an incredible lineup, and it, <laughs> I ain't going into Will Strong's man 80% fit because I went and did Arnold UK, so that's just a wee thing for that, guys. Some big laughs at World Strongest Man this year. That's all we can yeah, do. Yeah, I, I just want to... So. I, I just want to get my head down. i got eight weeks to kind of... I know what I need to improve and, you know, having a competition between that, for me, it's just not going to... It's just going to put me backwards again, you know. I'm going to have to take another deload either side of it all and it's just too much for me. So, yeah, I'm going to get myself sorted, see how this bicep is, see how my hips and stuff is and then let's get the rehab sorted and get into World Strongest Man in good shape because I'm definitely weird. coming in 100%. Last right. year, I didn't come in 100 I ain't making that excuse ever again, so let's do this. Stoneman Brothers are coming to the world's strongest man. We aren't going to be separated again. Big Tommy will have his big brother to hold his hand at the world's strongest man. No more Mr. Nice Guys from us, Tom. Yes, right guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Stay, stay smiling, stay spicy. <laughs> Don't forget to ring that little bell. <laughs>